Thanks for joining me today on this foray into the wilds of resource sharing data analysis. I'll spend the next 30 minutes or so telling you about some of my recent adventures on the trail of a possibly mythical uh, creature pictured here. Then we should have plenty of time at the end for questions and discussion. Um, as Marilee said, feel free at any time to type a question or comment in the chat window. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll um, do our best to make sure all your questions and comments are, are addressed before we sign off. The full disclosure, the Yeti sketches in my presentation were created by my art student son, Brian, who was home from college to write a paper, grab some lunch, and do some laundry. So I put him to work with a pencil for 10 minutes. It took me longer to make the lunch than it did for him to, um, to sketch the Yetis. It didn't advance. I'm clicking. Oh, it's that click. Okay, now we're good. Here's some of uh, an idea of what to expect from me today. First, we'll go over the concept of the ILL Yeti. I'll explain how the study I'm working on came about, report some preliminary big picture findings, and then talk about what I've been doing for the past few weeks, drilling down from the big picture deep into the data to take a close look at all the individual pixels. I do indeed know how to spell pixels, but the phrase going pixel, of course, put me in mind of going postal, and well, you kind of see where things went from there. But I'll end up by talking about what remains to be gleaned from the data in my position, and then, as promised, we can have some back and forth about the wacky world of collection sharing, the many numbers produced therein, and what we might hope to learn from them. First, let's get this important question out of the way. What, in fact, is an ILO Yeti? On one level, it's a goofy metaphor I chose for this webinar some weeks ago without thinking about the fact that ILL is technical jargon and might be confusing to someone who doesn't spreck at the library lingy. So uh, I can tell you one thing it isn't, because the ILL Yeti is not, in fact, ill. It's also not dead or dying, nor even particularly endangered. No, the ILL Yeti is elusive, scarce, hard to find, harder to track, maybe impossible to capture notoriously shy and jealous of its privacy. Many of us hope to catch a glimpse of this magnificent creature and spend chunks of our time working toward that goal. So you can tell me at the end of the hour whether I've managed to provide a legitimate glimpse of the Isle of Yeti to you on this day. A few words about what set me on the trail of the Isle of Yeti. Most libraries, no matter what type, public, academic, government, special, are involved in multiple resource sharing consortia where, with their ILL traffic passing through several different requesting and fulfillment systems. No one has access to all that collection sharing data from all those various systems. But there are occasional tantalizing glimpses. All institutions that are members of the Association of Research Libraries, for instance, report how many items they borrow through interlibrary loan each year and how many items they supply. But they send in one big number for the whole institution with data gathered from every branch library, from every ILL system and mushed together, I believe mushed is the correct technical term for that, so that it's really hard to make any sense of what you're looking at. My investigation got started because of a simple conversation between Katie Birch, who's a director of product management at OCLC, many of you know Katie, and OCLC's chief strategist, Lorca Dempsey. Katie mentioned in passing to Lorcan that over the past few years, the volume of requests going through the OCLC ILL infrastructure has been on a slow but steady decline. So Lorcan was intrigued. He wanted to know if this was happening all across the, uh, all forms of collection sharing in every corner of the ecosystem. Katie shrugged and said, I don't know. And of such encounters are grand and epic journeys born. At other times, such encounters result in small and rather interesting ILL studies. So at Lorcan's behest, Katie and I got together and um, we decided we'd like nothing more than to find the answers to these three questions. One, is ILO traffic overall going up or is it going down? Two, are there any patterns or trends to be found among those libraries where the volume of traffic is increasing or among those where it is decreasing? And thirdly, what sort of thinking goes into the choice of a particular fulfillment system or venue for a particular request? Yes, what I just described is the elusive big picture of resource sharing the ILL data. Have I mentioned that ILL data that presents a complete picture of any institution's collection sharing activity is extremely hard to come by? I, I did mention that. Very good. That's important. Enter the Borrow Direct Consortium, stage left. This group was an early adopter of what is known as 
the consortium borrowing model of sharing collections. You may have also heard of this model referred to as CERC to CERC or expanded circulation. What it means is that the group creates a virtual catalog that encompasses all their collections and patrons of any of the institutions can search that catalog and request items from any of the other institutions. Unlike traditional interlibrary loan, which can take from one to three weeks if you're talking about returnable items, books requested through consortial borrowing tend to show up at the borrower's library within two or three days. <clears throat> As you can imagine, this has been a very popular service with library patrons wherever it has been introduced. Borrow Direct started out in 2009, or I'm sorry, <laughs> rewind, 1999 with just three institutions, <clears throat> Columbia, Penn, and Yale. In 2002, they added four more partners, Brown, Cornell, Dartmouth, and Princeton. More recently, in 2011, Harvard and MIT joined. University of Chicago joined in 2013. Just this past summer, Johns Hopkins University signed up, bringing the total to 11 institutions. Duke just joined within the last month, but they won't be part of the, the current study. So to me, Borrow Direct seemed like a group whose overall collection sharing activity would provide the perfect snapshot of, of what's going on in the community, really indicative of of most of what's being tried out there and very active. So um, at least it would give a really good look at what's going on among large North American academic institutions. As it turned out, all 11 institutions were willing to provide the statistical data that I need in order to conduct the analysis. So it would be a small sample and not necessarily indicative of all types of libraries, but you have to start somewhere and it seems to me like a, an excellent place to start. So during the first part of the study, I took in the view from 30,000 feet. After conferring with staff at the participating institutions and with Borrow Direct project manager, manager, Peter Collins, I conducted a survey of what requesting and fulfillment venues each institution utilizes, what data each collects, and how they can slice it. Based on the survey responses, I created a custom data intake spreadsheet for each institution. So all they had to do was plug their research sharing numbers for the past five years into the appropriate boxes. While I waited for the Borrow Direct institutions to gather and transmit their ILL data to me, I decided to check out the resource sharing activity they reported to the Association of Research Libraries for the past five years. Again, these statistics are reported as gross numbers, number of items borrowed, number of items loaned, without any sort of breakdown. The most recent figures available, at least at that point, were from 2013. I, I knew that some of the Borrow Direct institutions had promised data from 2009 to 2013, while others could deliver 2010 through 2014. So while the study you know, covers five years, the four years pictured here um, are the years where I knew I would have data from all the institutions. So what does this chart show us? As a group, the borrow direct institutions lend a bit more than they borrow. When you add the data for all 11 institutions together, the total volume went up twice in three tries, with a slight dip in 2012. In 2013, for the first time, the group, the group broke through the 1 million filled request barrier. That is 1 million items borrowed and loaned total for all 11, with all partners. So far, it would seem that the question to, the answer to the question about whether ILO volume is going up or down is a resounding going up, just looking at this. In December, I got my hands on five years worth of detailed ILO data from the 11 borrow direct institutions. Here's what that looked like added all together. The pattern is quite similar to what we saw with the gross ARL numbers. Um, steady increase, slightly more lending than borrowing. There are two interesting differences in the data reported to me. One, there's no dip in 2012. The increase in ILO volume marches steadily uphill without interruption. Two, aside from 2012, the numbers reported to me are consistently a bit less overall than what was reported to ARL. Actually, the numbers reported to ARL and me were pretty close, but why would they be different? Well, there are several possibilities, some of them listed on this slide. The project was started on pretty short notice, on a quick time frame, and conveniently in the middle of the busiest time of the fall semester. So I asked the folks at the institutions pretty much report those numbers on which they could readily lay their hands. I didn't want to burden anyone with a big ILO statistics scavenger hunt. It struck me that it was far more important that each institution's contribution to the data pool be consistent, representing the same set of activities for the same libraries every year. And that appears to be what I got. 
I should say that in an early version of a presentation on this topic at ALA Midwinter, I reported a larger difference between what was reported to ARL and what was reported to me. Uh, you see there that 97.9 is very, it's really, really close. Um, before I had something like 80%, and that turned out to be an error on my part. Not an error of math, but of transcribing things from my worksheets to my slides, so my bad. It's actually much closer than, than uh, it was first look. Bottom line, both sets of numbers, those reported to ARL, those reported to me, say the volume is going up. Still at 30,000 feet, I was eager to see what the numbers would look like when broken down by each of the requesting and fulfillment methods being used by the 11 institutions. Natural place to start was the borrowed direct consortial borrowing transactions among the members of the group. One thing to remember is that the borrowed direct group added new members during the time depicted here, two in 2011, another in 2013. So sure, we see the numbers are trending up, but is that because there's a bigger demand for resources by the patrons across the entire Borrow Direct partnership? Or is the growth concentrated within the new members? So we'll talk more about that later. We're still up at 30,000 feet where you can't see that kind of detail. You may notice that the line for borrowing appears to be missing. That's because, another thing to remember about this chart, is that Borrow Direct is a closed system with all the borrowing and lending taking place among the members. So when you gather all the data together, throw it onto a chart, Borrowing and lending totals should match exactly, which, to my relief, they pretty much did. The line is in blue or red. It's purple, folks. That's because the totals match to the tune of 99.7%. And once again, trending up. Next, I looked at the OCLT ILO activity, which was you know, the question that got us started down this path anyway, uh, noticing the overall decline in the, process in, in the system overall. So I looked at the activity uh, across the 11 borrow direct institutions. And again, this is not just among themselves, but with every partner. You'll recall that Katie had noticed a 14% drop in the number of requests passing through the OCLC ILL system between 2009 and 2013. But she told me that folks at a number of big academics had mentioned their borrowing seemed to be going up. The OCLC ILL numbers reported to me support Katie's points to, um, to a large extent. Overall, with borrowing and lending added together, activity is rather flat, with a little spike in 2012, uh, but then trending slightly downward. When we separate the borrowing and lending activity, we see a sharpish decline in lending, from over 250,000 filled requests in 2010 to about 225,000 in 2013. This is not quite offset by what, what looks to be a pretty steady rise in borrowing via OCLC on well, the blue line. Um, the two lines for borrowing and lending look like they might just meet and cross, going in opposite directions in a few more years. That might be interesting to come back and, and look at. Next, I compare the numbers of requests passing through the Rapid ILL system for this group. Nine of the 11 members of Borrow Direct report using Rapid. So most of you are probably already familiar with this, but for those who aren't, Rapid ILL is um, it's a requesting and fulfillment method, primarily for articles or non-returnables. Institutions pay an annual fee to join and agree to provide copies from self-selected journal titles from their collections within 24 hours. Their holdings records are standardized so that the system will route requests only to those institutions that actually have the issue. It effectively automates the vast majority of routine copy requests, and the speed and fill rate truly, truly impressive. It should be noted that Rapid ILO has recently added the functionality needed to request and deliver books. So it will be interesting to see if that does anything to reverse the pretty clear downward trend indicated here. Because after peaking in 2011, both borrowing and lending have been going down for the members of the borrow direct group. Again, this does not necessarily reflect the experiences of any other group of libraries. But among these 11, there's a clear downturn, especially in lending. One wonders if maybe the proliferation of e-journals and increased availability of scholarly articles and full text online is having an effect here. That's one of the things we hope to find out as we dig deeper. Finally, um, the last system to look at separately, uh, DocLine is an ILL system created and maintained by the National Library of Medicine. Like Rapid ILL, it is used primarily for articles, so a few book requests do go through DocLine. Only five of the 11 borrow direct institutions reporting using uh, reported using DocLine. I can say that in take a drink why. Borrowing is on a steady decline for those five, with lending in decline after peaking in 2011. So ILO uh, via OCLC 
the rapid ILL and DocLine, all forms of what one might think of as traditional ILL and all trending down. Only consortial borrowing, which is a fairly new model that essentially expands the traditional circulation function across multiple institutions, is trending up as they're requesting a fulfillment venue among this group. So overall, collection sharing activity is trending up, but now with an asterisk. This chart shows what part of the whole each requesting and fulfillment venue represents for the group overall and compares the earliest year for which I have data from everyone with the most recent year. So the first thing that jumps out is that borrow direct is growing in roughly the same proportion in which OCLC is shrinking. And whether that's a direct cause and effect, don't have any idea yet, but that's one of the questions to um, be analyzed in detail later. There may be other reasons. Um, rapid ILL and DocLine also take up smaller pieces of the pie in 2013, with other in the red holding steady. Note that other includes consortial borrowing systems besides borrow direct. I'll have more to say about that later. This chart is an attempt to capture year-to-year -year trends overall and for each of the requesting and fulfillment venues, as well as whether, as a group, the borrow direct libraries were a net lender or a net borrower within a particular venue in a given year. Light blue means net lender. Gold means net borrower. Green stands for breaking even. Remember, the borrow direct venue is a closed system where all the borrowing and lending is done by the 11 participants. I put dark blue outlines around the arrows that are trending down, only to make it easier for your eye to see the difference between the ups and downs of the same color. 2010 has arrows pointing sideways uh, because I don't have complete data for 2009 and thus can't determine if the numbers for 2010 are trending up or down. The chart reinforces some of the things we've already noted from our perch at 30,000 feet. The borrow direct group lends more than it borrows in nearly every venue every year. Overall and borrow direct numbers are trending up. Many of the numbers for the more traditional models of ILL are trending down. Note the changes in 2012 and 2013 in the other category. The group has become a net borrower and the numbers are trending up. More about that in a second. I know, lots of charts and graphs. Don't worry, we'll have some more Yetis soon. This chart compares the numbers for the three most popular requesting and fulfillment venues used by the 11 borrow direct institutions across the four years for which I have data from everyone. Here you can see the trends and proportions very clearly. OCLC in red, holding pretty steady, slight downturn in 2013. Rapid ILL in green, peaking, then declining. Borrow direct in blue, growing steadily, finally overtaking OCLC ILL as the most popular and prolific method in the most recent year, 2013. But remember back a few slides ago, two pie charts where a little red slice of other are presented, among other things, additional consortial borrowing systems besides borrow direct. And remember the recent changes in the other category on the chart with all the arrows. Four of the 11 borrow direct institutions participate in multiple consortial borrowing systems. Two of them have joined other consortial borrowing arrangements since 2012. This other traffic is becoming something of a big deal within this group. If we change our slide to include a bar that combines borrow direct numbers with all the other circ to circ traffic attributable to this group of 11 institutions. Note the, uh, I hope it's the same color for you, it's magenta for me. It's, uh, it's the new bar on the chart. We see that circ to circ or consortial borrowing is growing even faster than we thought. It overtakes OCLC ILL a year earlier than borrow direct by itself. And by 2013, the volume of consortial borrowing traffic for these 11 institutions towers over all the other methods breaking the half-million filled request threshold. Interesting. Now, let's go pixel or get granular or trade our yeti-seeking telescope in for a microscope, whatever metaphor you prefer for getting into the finer details and looking at the various parts in relation to the whole. The questions get even more interesting as you dig more deeply. For instance, here's an example of a real under-the-hood type of question. We mentioned it before briefly. We, I'm speaking with the royal we. Don't know what happened there. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll chip her down. Is the growth overall, uh, in overall borrow direct activity, um, happening across all 11 members, or is it mostly a product of introducing more partners into the mix? To address that question, I broke the overall numbers for all three, I'm sorry, I, I broke the overall numbers for all collection activity into three groups. 
the three original Borrow Direct founders from 1999, the four institutions that joined in 2002, and the four new members who have come on board since 2011. So here we see the overall activity for the original three Borrow Direct members, growing slightly and flattening over the last couple of years. Now we add in the overall ILL activity of the four institutions that joined Borrow Direct in 2002. The shape of the line is almost identical to that of the three founders, but a tick less each year. Now add in the third group. Those four institutions that have joined since 2011. Remember, one joined in 2014, so any effect of their joining won't be reflected on the slide. It only goes up to 2013. The most obvious and striking thing about this chart is the sharp increase in activity among the newest group, almost catching up to the other two by 2013. Clearly, having a couple of those institutions join Borrow Direct in 2011 had a momentous impact on the overall lending and borrowing volume for these institutions. This chart would seem to suggest that the growth in overall activity is limited mostly to the new members, and consortial borrowing accounts for most, if not all of it. Now remember this slide from the top of the program, how overall the 11 Borrow Direct institutions reported nearly the identical numbers to me that they reported to ARL for those same years. One of the effects of drilling down into the data is to reveal that in spite of the apparent match with the numbers previously reported, there is a great deal of diversity to be found by examining each institution's numbers in turn. For instance, this scatter chart shows just how much the responses diverged from each other. The first thing you'll notice, if it is near lunchtime, where you are, is that this appears to be a chart about pizza by the pie, pizza by the slice, and perhaps the side order of those little Swedish meatballs like you get at Ikea. That effect was unintentional and had nothing to do with luring hungry ILO yetis to the table. Now this chart actually shows what percentage of their ARL reported borrowing and lending numbers were reported to me by each institution. Within the red circle are five institutions whose responses were very close to what they reported to ARL, including one that aced the exercise, 100 by 100. The green circle contains two more institutions that weren't all that far off from what they reported to ARL. The blue triangle contains three institutions that reported significantly higher numbers to me than they did to ARL. This was unexpected and it bears some looking into. And finally, in the middle of the big rectangle is a single institution that reported considerably less than what was reported to ARL. This was not unexpected, but rather a conscious decision by staff at that institution to report only the activity of the main library, not the many branches, which would have been too tall of an order for the short data gathering window that we had to work with. The takeaway from this slide is simply that there's more complexity hidden within the numbers than you might have first imagined, and I need to spend some time investigating the variances to make sure they don't undermine any of the conclusions that the data seems to suggest. Here's another way to look at the, the data about which institutions reported what percentage of their previously reported ARL figures. I've broken the reporting percentages into the same three groups we used to look at overall resource sharing activity a few slides ago. The three original founding members of the Borrow Direct Consortium, the four institutions that joined in 2002, and the four new ones that have come on board since 2011. When looked at through this prism, the only variance that really sticks out is the percentage reported in 2012 by the three original founding members. This suggests that a closer look at that data behind those numbers would, uh, would be worth the effort. And if you re may recall where the, the pattern uh, shown in the ARL numbers overall, where, where the pattern was broken with the numbers reported to me, was that there was no dip in 2012. So could this be pointing toward why that happened? I don't know. That, that, that just will take some more work coming up. Uh, but that will be some of the more fascinating things that happen later is trying to determine the, the cause and effect of some of the things we're seeing. I'll also be querying all the participants with various types of questions that arise as I look through the individual sets of data, besides uh, pointing out things like this that stick out a little bit. So more about that in a minute. All right. No doubt you remember this chart with all the pretty arrows. Breaking this report into three groups was another way to reveal some stark differences lying just beneath the surface of this seemingly homogenous set of resource sharing partners. First, I'm going to click through them really quickly to show you how they change. Then we'll come back and look at the results for each group in more detail. So, okay, this is the overall chart that you saw before. That is breaking it into the three founding members, the ones who joined first. It's changed quite a lot, huh? That's the three middle, the, the four who joined in the middle in 2002. 
And finally, the, the new institutions. So that's a lot of change. I'm going to go back and walk through them uh, in, in some more detail. So here we, we're back again with uh, those charts showing all 11 institutions. Um, they're net lenders, overall numbers, borrow direct numbers, trending up. By 2012, most of the more traditional methods of resource sharing trending down. This represents the same snapshot for the, just the three original founding members of the Borrow Direct Consortium. Aside from OCLC, the data for these institutions aggregates as net borrowers. Even in the overall category, the, the most recent numbers for this group shows a downward trend. Moving on to the four institutions that joined in 2002, this group more closely reflects the snapshot for the whole group of 11 members. More net lending, more trending up in various categories, but again, just as with the group of three founding libraries, overall, 2013, the numbers are trending down. Finally, the snapshot for the four Borrow Direct members who joined from 2011 through 2014. No activity in the Borrow Direct venue for 2010, of course. Much net lending and upward trending across the board. Downward trending and rapid ILO and dock line for the past couple of years. So what, do we, what conclusion can we draw from this? The new kids at the ball appear to be providing the growth. Among the group, even I, among this group, um, the, the most recent joinees, even OCLC, ILL activity is up all across the board. That was unusual. That's kind of where I am today. It's a work in progress. So instead of a big ending where we catch the Yeti and rehabilitate him or make him go to work at a startup company or something, um, we have cliffhangers. So that's about what I can say today. Uh, I can report about what's going to happen next. So I spent April designing individual snapshots comparing each institution's numbers with the group averages and then posing questions based on what I'm seeing in the data. So these reports are just about ready to go out to the um, individual borrow direct institutions. Some of the questions will seem to get at the underlying causes for changes in the trends over time. Some will ask about the thinking behind joining a particular consortial group or sending a particular request through a particular venue rather than some other. I really feel like the insight gained from going back to the Borrow Direct ILO staff with questions may end up being the most interesting output of the study. Already I've been talking with some of them. Um, an ILO person from Penn was quite eloquent about how ILO processes have grown to be um, so much more efficient. And so ILO departments are delivering a lot more materials these days from their own collections, for instance, because the technology has gotten better at catching ILO requests for materials already owned. This alone, the Penn person pointed out, could account for a 10 to 15 drop, 10 to 15 percent drop in borrowing every year. So that kind of insight doesn't just come from the numbers. Uh, I need to talk to the folks who actually uh, do this stuff. And I can hardly wait to speak with the other folks. I may spend some time on fill rates and returnables versus non-returnables, if that is of interest to the ILL staffers. I especially want to look closely at how each member of the group interacted with the others via OCLC ILL and track how that changed as more institutions joined Borrow Direct. That's to find out if, you know, is there really a cause effect between the growth in direct consortium borrowing, Borrow Direct, and the, the, some of the decreases we've seen in OCLC ILL. It's not clear that those really, it, that really is one replacing another, as we've seen, uh, you know, catching more things that you own and turning that around and providing from your own collection is one explanation for the volume going down. It's possible that the direct consortium borrowing stuff could be creating a new class of users who are using the, the system for different reasons than I own mine. So that's some of the stuff I hope to uh, learn more about as I talk to the ILO folks and um, take a closer look at the numbers. When this project is finished, there may be other questions to pursue with more detailed data such as tracking what sorts of material is being loaned via the various methods, both within and outside the group, like how old is it, where was it published, what are the topics, that kind of thing, see if there are patterns in that. Um, and since this is a small, um, very unscientific sample, it may be worth doing the same analysis with data from other groups and other types of libraries. I have a solid commitment from the CIC libraries to take part in an extension of the study, and they want to track some additional data points, such as purchase on demand. So we've come to the end of my prepared remarks. So let's do a quick, quick recap of what seems to be indicated by our examined 
Our examinations of this small but hopefully representative pool of collection sharing data. There seem to be two main findings. One, according to the numbers from the Bar Direct group anyway, traditional ILL seems to be slightly on a decline, at least among these highly active libraries. Two, consortial borrowing is growing and at a steep rate, but much of that growth may be due to more institutions getting involved with using that particular model. I'm not sure about it. About the why, we're not, that's the that's the question that remains. So, what will these follow-up interviews with the Borrow Direct ILO staffers reveal? We'll have to wait and see. After all, this is work in progress. In the meantime, what do you think? Am I on target about the what? Do you have opinions about the why? And did you catch a glimpse today of the ILO Yeti? Did you see even a shadow of the big big picture of system-wide collection sharing, enough to be able to picture what that might be like? Let us hear your questions and comments, please. I open it up. Thanks for listening. So I see that um, uh, several people have already found the chat window and are uh, sending notes to all participants, which is great. Um, uh, you too can find the chat window and send your questions in. So first of all, there's an overall. There was a, a question which was answered um, in chat, which is: Is borrow direct for both loans and articles, or just loans? And uh, clarification from one of our Participants that um, that borrow direct is only returnables at this point, and only and just loans. So that's good to know. Um, also, some people are asking uh, specific questions, uh, asking you to drill down on the data on particular slides, and you can use the little drop down yeah. thing Good. to right here, the drop down guy, and How you cool can go directly that? to slide 28. How useful that is! I know. Oh, all right, I was trying to do that. So um, the question on slide 28 cool. is, right. if the newbies didn't join Borrow Direct until 2011, why is their data on slide 28 for them in 2010, the blue bar? All right. Um, the, I probably should have reinforced the idea that this data was overall collection sharing activity by each of the institutions. Every member of the Association of Research Libraries once a year sends a big fat number to that organization saying, I loaned this many, I borrowed this many through every form of collection sharing that I do. And that's what's reflected in, in these slides, in this particular slide. Comparing the overall activity they reported to me with the overall activity in ARL. So it's not just, uh, it's the borrow direct group, but it's not the, just the request sent through the borrow direct venue. So you've just isolated a, a, a group of uh, institutions to look at Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the earlier slides where I talked about the reporting, we did mention overall. I did not put that here. Sorry about that. Okay, another question on slide 22. Okay, slide 22. Working on that. That's the pull down. I could just type it in too, huh? I think so. Awesome. Hit enter. What's that? Maybe uh, not slide 22. Um, it's, What's it about? Uh, let's see. Compare the graph on slide 22 with circ to circ to the pie chart. Sure. Okay. Well, let's see. No idea where I'm going here. Um, whoever asked that question maybe might want to say more. Let's see. So that's 21. Oh, circ to circ on the pie chart. So assuming I'm on the right slide, which is 21. This is the thing where it uh, shows the various venues that are most popular among this group. Borrow Direct has its own bar. Um, OCLC does in Rapid. And I've added a bar that takes the portion of the other in the pie charts, which we'll look at in a second, that was consortial borrowing. Not everything in other was. So it's also web forms and alien forms and emails and that kind of thing. But a chunk of it was consortial borrowing. So I took that portion of what other was consortial borrowing and put it on top of borrow direct, added it to it, and made a new bar reflecting all the circ to circ transactions. And that's what this is. So you see that that's growing very fast and dominates. It's, it's the most popular by 2012, dominates by 2013. Now I need to remember where the pie chart is. I have to figure out where that is. It seems like it was a while ago. Back it up. Yeah, there it is. So, assuming I'm comparing the right things, the blue is borrow direct and the red is other 
but it uh, includes more than just the, the other circus drug. I think I mentioned that um, of the 11 borrow direct institutions, four of them uh, are in multiple um, multiple uh, consortial borrowing things. There's uh, one of them is is part of one that also the CIC has. Uh, one of them is run by the state of Pennsylvania. There's one by the state of Rhode Island. So there, and the amount of traffic in those varies uh, a lot. And just those four institutions, they're busy enough that it really had an impact on the overall numbers. I think I've dabbled about that probably. Enough. Okay, and she says that that, that does answer your question. So there was yeah. another uh, comment, um, which is, have you run statistical regressions? I'm concerned that the trends you're seeing are frequently not statistically significant. Hmm. I have not, no, this is just literally um, first passes at, at this data. I have not done that, but I, but I will. This is just really one dip into the thing. Here's kind of what I'm seeing. And uh, I, feel, I still, even though I've had it for several months now, it still feels like early days on the actual analysis. Okay, here's a here's a question that went um, to not to all participants, um, uh, and which I think was an error. It sounds daunting, but will it be possible to analyze your data with any significant changes in each institution? So uh, changes in enrollment, new department program added, collection profile or development policy changed, et cetera. And I think that that's uh, what you're hoping to get into when you talk to individual. Um, uh, people about why there might be changes at their institutions? Absolutely. That's that's a big part of it, is trying to match up what we're seeing with different events, uh, both events within the OCL, or within the interlibrary loan office, getting new equipment, staffing things, and also across the, across the institution, enrollment things. Uh, enrollment level is definitely one of the things that we're looking at or offering new uh, new degrees, that kind, of, that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Here's another question along the same lines. Any information of trends, correlations of ILL usage when libraries deaccession collections and or increase uh, e-books and e-journals? I'm sorry, I missed a little of that. Uh, okay, oh, I'm finding it. So, so changes in uh, the profile of collections? Not, no, nope, not yet. Again, this was just, um, Started out with a very simple idea. We can't. We we don't have these numbers. No one collects them. Let's get them. And and we've done that. And now this is the first look. So those are um, those are more sophisticated questions that we haven't looked at yet. And in this round, probably don't have the data for. Uh, but perhaps could come out in conversations with your with your um, uh, colleagues at institutions. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not seeing any uh, further questions at this point. Um, I'm going to pause here for a second. Um, and I want to invite people, I mean, if you have other things, both, I mean, some of those things you've suggested, most of them we've at least thought of in our internal conversations, but not all of them. If you think of other things you'd like to see us look into or add to this, or if you'd like to uh, suggest other ways of, of uh, ways the data could have been sliced or visualized that I didn't do, I'm certainly uh, eager to hear any of that stuff. So I'm putting um, Dennis's email address in there so that you can uh, copy and paste it. If you've got questions, please contact him uh, directly. Here's a more um, general question. To borrow direct requests, go to the library or directly to the user. You meaning meaning the, the, the items as they're being yes. delivered? They, they direct delivered to the library as far as I know in borrow direct and in most of the folks who use that model. But definitely with borrow direct, it's, uh, they show up to the library. So not as direct as could be. Well, actually, you know, consortium borrowing means that, you know, they share a virtual yeah. catalog. Direct means that actually that's a, that refers to being able to tie into the search system and update no statuses and things like that. Some do consortium borrowing without tying into the search system. So direct just means that. Yeah. And uh, people have shared the borrow direct um, uh, URL. We'll, we'll send that out to participants. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, so with that, oh, here we go. Uh, to me, one is comparing apples with oranges when comparing articles, rapid doc line, without, um, without books, bar direct, and it gets murkier when you add in OCLC. So definitely these are different 
Oh. Well, but, yeah, okay. no one's saying the same things. It was just we were asking folks, what are all the different ways that you share collections within each of those venues? What do the numbers look like? What are the trends over five years? So, yeah, they agreed they're very different, and it's hard to even characterize them. Even I even felt a little uh, strange characterizing Rapid as traditional ILO because it's not. When Rapid came, it was it was revolutionary. It changed. Uh, I mean, it, it was a whole new approach that worked really well uh, and better than anything that was there before it. So it, it is very much apples and oranges. But our our idea was just trying to get a glimpse of how much things are moving around from library to library and uh, how they're being carried back and forth and whether it's going up or down. So here's um, uh, another another question. So to be sure of the research I've seen here, when you refer to the traditional OCLC borrowing lending in comparison with the borrow direct requests, you are only counting the activities among the borrow direct institutions, or all libraries and institutions using CLC. Sorry, I was, I was looking at something else. Let me read that over. Um, oh, OCLC. Yeah, OCLC, yeah. Right. Um, when I, the only transactions that I mentioned that are limited to the borrow direct group are the things that go through the consortial borrowing system that's called borrow direct. Again, this is just a group of institutions. Um, they have I picked them and they picked me because they are a group that already exists. They they collaborate with each other. All the other data was was the extent of their collection sharing with all partners. So that's why. I kept saying overall, and that might not have been the best way to describe it. Um, the only thing limited to the group was the actual consortial borrowing, borrow direct thing. Everything else was everything done with all partners everywhere. So, but the original question that got you started was looking at what was happening within OCLC overall. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what Katie and Lorcan were talking about. They wondered what's, what's going on out in the world, and really that's gotten, because there are so many systems in play, uh, other countries are using even other systems. There are national systems. There are state systems that I didn't even talk about. There are all kinds of public library consortia out there. Uh, it's you, it just to get an idea of everything that's going through every system. I don't know a way to do that right now. This is an attempt to just take a snapshot and see if we can. Again, I've said, well, I'll say it one more time. Not very scientific. It's just trying to get an indication which way the arrow is pointing. So it will point us toward things that will be can be studied in more depth with better data that will be more scientific, I hope. This was just a starter. So just when I thought we were finishing up, we're getting some more questions. Um, so the Born Digital, or sorry, Born Digital. Mm -hmm. I, my mind is in another place. The Borrow Direct group includes some of the biggest of the research libraries, um, and that's true for CIC as well. If you're trying to study ILL more collectively, wouldn't it make sense to study a less uniform group? So the OCLC research on how collections are similar or diverse implies that there are lots of libraries sharing the long tail of collections. How much ILL is related to this long tail of less widely held material? Fascinating question, and I would love to pursue that. Um, yeah, I had to start, so again, I think I even said these exact words. I had to start somewhere. This was a place I could start. Some of this is about, you know, they say politics is the art of the possible. Well, some of the research is, what can I get my hands on? <laughs> if I could get my hands on this other data, yes. And, exactly. and, and we can, we may be able to. And that's a, your question, what, you, what you've asked there is fascinating. I would love to, to track that. And we may. One of the things, well, in the early conversation with the borrowed to graph group, again, they're, they're fairly homogenous, even though when we started looking at the surface, we found that their responses varied widely on a number, uh, on a number of things. Um, some of them were more eager to do this than others. Some of them didn't even, you know, weren't even sure, do I want to get my ILO data? And we were hoping that if it went well and they were interested in what we, they saw, that folks would be willing to drill further down and really look at collection data and, you know, funding and, and stuff like that. So um, your point is well taken, though, that looking at different kind of libraries would, uh, and, and groups that interact that are different from each other uh, would be very useful. Okay, once again, I'm not seeing any <laughs> more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and thank uh, Dennis for uh, his presentation. Thanks you all for all of your great questions. Thanks to uh, the Borrow Direct folks for sharing the data, which really makes this all possible. Um, we really appreciate your attendance and participation in this webinar, and we will post a recording of this webinar online and notify you by email when that is available. 
We hope that you'll share it with your friends and uh, continue to engage with us and ask great